the question is pressing upon Christians now more than it has in a while. How do we show mercy to a culture which openly defies God? Our culture hates even the merest mention of Sodom and Gomorrah. It is anathema to the great powers in Toronto, Hollywood, Ottawa, Washington, Paris, London, New York, that anything should be condemned. Any behavior is acceptable. Every behavior is legitimate. Yet the outcry against them is great, and their sin is very grave. Grave, burdensome, heavy. Their sin is a burden to someone. To whom is it a burden? Who's crying out? And do those who cry out against Sodom and Gomorrah have a prayer to be heard? If you hold your ears closed and stamp your feet while shouting at the top of your lungs, you can make believe that there's no God whatsoever. And even if there is a God, you can't help but sin. And so he should just accept you the way you are. After all, he made you the way you are. It's his fault you sin. Besides all that, it's just love, an alternative way of expressing love. But someone is crying out against Sodom and Gomorrah, and it goes up as a sin, and God considers the sin as very grave, very burdensome, very heavy. He decides to investigate to see if the sin is as the report of the sin. What is he going to find in the bathhouses of San Francisco, the brothels of Amsterdam? Last week, the outcry against my older son was great, and I ran to see whether the deed of the older son warranted the outcry of the younger son, who was bleeding from the mouth. If your son asks for an egg, would you give him a scorpion instead? Of course, the older boy asked for mercy, having been found guilty as accused, and mercy came to him. I felt like killing him, but instead, I grounded him from his computer games for three days. Chicago, that great and corrupt city, has had on average a handful of violent murders every day of the year. Wherever there is our culture, there is outcry evil going up, and powers who continually dismiss the outcry as mere social ills, alternate lifestyles, political aberrations. But the outcry is going up against our culture, detailing grave, burdensome, heavy sin. We don't want it to be sin, because for us to admit that our culture is sinful would be to admit that there's nothing that can be done to fix it. Far better for it to be social ill. Sociologists can guide us to a better life. Far better for it to be alternative lifestyles. We can learn to live alternatively. Far better for sin to be a political aberration. The right elected official can lead us to prosperity for generations to come. Sin. Well, sin can't be fixed. It can only be eradicated. Sin can only be eradicated by an open and contrite confession of sin. This is wrong, God. What I'm doing is wrong, defiant of your will, God. Please forgive me. Blot out my sin. If your son asks for a fish, would you give him a serpent? How do we show mercy to a defiant culture? The picture has it that God and Abraham are standing on a hillside looking down on Sodom and Gomorrah. This is in stark contrast to how we feel when we consider the evil all around us pressing down on us. Abraham has been chosen by God, and to him, God has given every sort of promise for wealth and everlasting posterity, for offspring more numerous than the stars in the sky. 
You have been chosen by God to be offspring of Abraham, perched alongside him atop that hill, looking down at a defiant culture. What are we going to do to show mercy to this defiant culture? We have power, you see, to show mercy to the people of grave, burdensome, heavy sin. Abraham draws near and says, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? He's assuming that the sin is indeed as bad as the outcry against it, if not worse. The Lord had said that if not, then I'll know. But Abraham is assuming that the sin is so grave that the Lord will have no choice, no recourse, but to sweep away both cities. Two cities big enough to have separate individual kings. How many people would you say live in the two cities? Let's say they are the size of St. Catharines and Grimsby, side by side. Abraham's wheels are spinning furiously. How am I going to show mercy on this defiant culture? Fifty. Fifty righteous. If fifty righteous people are found there, will you not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous who are in there? It's quite telling, isn't it, that Abraham reconsidered his, reconsiders his number and realizes that it might be too high. How many people are in this building right now? How many churches in St. Catharines and Grimsby have about as many people in them at this very moment? Take heart. If God promises that for 50, he will not sweep away the righteous with the wicked, then you are most assuredly not going to be swept away with the wicked. I am but dust and ashes, speaking to the Lord, Abraham says, negotiating. But what if 45 are found there? Will you destroy it just because you counted up to 45 and couldn't find the other five to make 50? Right, says the Lord. I will not destroy it if I find 45. 40! How sinful was this place? Yet Abraham continued to press for mercy. What is he doing to show mercy to a defiant culture? For the sake of 40, I will not destroy it. This is a very evil culture, isn't it? If among all the people of St. Catharines and Grimsby cannot be found 40 righteous people, should these cities not be wiped out? Doesn't justice demand it? Don't be angry. If I ask for the number to go down even further, what if you find only 30? Will you wipe them out with all the wicked? 30? Can't we get 30 on a dark Wednesday night in Lent with snow whipping around in sub-zero temperatures? Just how evil does Abraham think Sodom and Gomorrah are? So evil that he thinks God will not find 30. So he asks for the number to be reduced yet again down to 20. If it's less than 20, then the sin is so grave, so burdensome, so heavy that God must certainly destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Please don't be angry. I know you have to. But can it be 10 what if you find only 10 righteous people? What did Abraham do to show mercy to a defiant culture? If you, even though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father grant the Holy Spirit to the children of Abraham when they ask, what shall we do to show mercy to a defiant culture? We pray for them. Why do we pray for them? Because a defiant culture is our culture. We have been brought out from these sinful people as sinners ourselves. Even now as saints, we mix and mingle with sinners in just about every way imaginable. In our buying, our selling, in our celebrations, in our mourning, in our hobbies, in our politics, in our entertainment. We are saints praying for sinners. We are sinners praying for ourselves. 
The sins of our culture mix and mingle with the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah, with the sin of the whole world. Sin actually became so heavy that Christ Jesus couldn't carry it. He needed help. One of his disciples was forced to bear the burden of sin, so burdensome, so that Jesus could complete his journey to that place of pain. Here is Abraham, enduring the evil of Sodom and Gomorrah, bearing it with God for the sake of the righteous. Here are we, enduring the evil of our culture, bearing it with Christ for the sake of ourselves, all the righteous in all the places of the world, and for our children. When we bear the heavy burdens of the sins of our world, we deliver them over to Jesus so that he can die. The Roman soldier, when he saw us do what we did, declared, This man was the Son of God. The Roman soldier. Huh. The world can see you. Our culture sees us. They know we're praying for them that they might come to the cross to put their sins upon Jesus, and Jesus, in return, might forgive them their sins, eradicating their sins. They might hate us for doing so because they're defiant, but they know we are doing so, each of us individually, a little Abraham. For the sake of the righteous, even an infinitesimally small number of righteous people, we will pray for the wicked to be spared a just judgment. Who knows? The prayers of the righteous for the righteous might call one more of them out of wickedness to join us on the hill looking down where we will continue to do all we can to show mercy to a defiant culture.